Hi everybody, welcome back. We're still in chapter nine. I talked about unemployment rate. So in this video, I'm going to talk about inflation rate and uh, some important things that you need to know about inflation rate. Again, um, if you remember from the previous video, um, the, the organization who is in charge of unemployment uh, rate and uh, basically anything related to the labor market and inflation rate is Bureau of Labor Statistics. So um, Bureau of Labor Statistics or BLS is also in charge of collecting information on inflation rate. To calculate the inflation rate, the Bureau of Labor Statistics needs to calculate uh, one important economic indicator that is called consumer price index. If you look at the notes, the very first thing that we discuss in part uh, in inflation uh, rate section is CPI or consumer price index. Consumer price index basically measures the cost of living. It measures the changes in the price of goods and services that we buy from one month to another. Just like unemployment rate, the Bureau of Labor Statistics measures CPI and inflation rate every single month. So they have a really huge task in terms of providing all these data for us. And if you're interested, just Google BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, go to their website and you can um, see um, the unemployment rate of each month. They um, update that information, uh, I believe the first Friday of each month. So they go there, check out the CPI, check out the unemployment rate and all the other information. They break down the unemployment rate, um, let's say by gender, by race, um, by cities, urban area, rural area, anything that um, you want to know. So going back to um, CPI, so consumer price index measures basically the cost of living, the average prices that consumers pay for different goods and services that they buy. And we need CPI to calculate the inflation rate. So if you check out the um, inflation rate formula, it's just CPI, the changes in CPI. If you remember in chapter um, seven, when we were talking about real GDP, uh, we had this base year. We again have another base year or base period when it comes to calculating inflation rate, okay? Uh, by definition, we have a base year um, that CPI is 100, equal to 100 by definition. So right now, this base year or base period, if I want to be more precise, is from 1982 to 1984. And they kind of modified this year to 2014-2015. By definition, the cost of living in this period is 100. So the consumer price index by definition is 100, okay, in the base period, okay? just like the base here in um, real GDP, okay? And every time that we see another CPI, we always try to compare it with this 100 to see how much uh, the, the cost of living basically changed. So if you look at the notes, I put an example for you that in May 2018, the CPI is 194.4. What does it mean? If the CPI in the base period is 100, it means that the cost of goods and services that the people, that the buyers, consumers bought in the base period was $100. Right now, in May 2018, to purchase the same goods and services, people should buy, should pay $194.4. So the cost of living went up between the base period and the May of 2018. So the CPI or the, um, the price that people paid for the same number of goods and services went up by 94.4 percentage point. That's how we read CPI numbers, okay? But as I said, the most important application of CPI for us to calculate the inflation rate Inflation rate is nothing but the percentage change in CPI from one year to another. So it's the CPI. If you want to calculate, let's say the CPI in 2020, it's the, sorry, if you want to calculate the inflation rate in 2020, this is how we can calculate it. CPI of 2020 minus the CPI in 2019 divided by CPI in 2019 
its percentage, so you should multiply it by 100. That is the inflation rate, okay? So make sure you know the, um, the inflation rate formula. You can skip the CPI, okay? You can skip the CPI, how we structure the CPI. I'm not gonna ask any question on that, but make sure you know how to calculate CPI. Important, another important thing you need to know is what we mean by hyperinflation and deflation. Hyperinflation is when the inflation rate is more than 50%, okay? So everything basic, basically is becoming expensive every single day, every single minute, okay? So we're talking about the rapid change in um, um, prices. Uh, deflation is when the inflation rate is going down from one year to another. Inflation rate is negative when we have deflation. Read about the two types of inflation. We have demand pool inflation and cost push inflation. They are related actually to chapter three. So if demand increases, if you remember from chapter three and your supply is fixed, the price is going up. Now we're talking about price of all the goods and services in the economy, right? So demand pool inflation is the change in the prices that is caused by the change in demand, increase in demand. People are demanding more and more goods and services. That pushes the price to increase. Another way that the price can go up and we really experience inflation is, is through the supply side of the market. We call it cost push inflation. When everything um, becomes more expensive because of the supply side of the market, this time, the cost actually is going up. The cost of production for our suppliers, for our producers is going up. That's why we see an increase in the price. So the price can go up and we experience inflation either because of increase in demand or either because of the decline in supply. So read these two types of inflation and then you can skip the rest of the chapter. That's pretty much it about inflation rate. Till next time. Bye-bye.